Today, we're looking at Infinity Prospecting's cleanup sluice that they sent me in the mail. Ladies and gentlemen, Devin Gold's patented Vortex Drop Riffle VDR technology recovers substantially more flower gold and reduce cleanup times with this proven technology. We'll see about that. Um, I was contacted by email, said, Kyle, do you want to check out one of our sluice mat products? We think you'll like them. To which I replied, not really interested. Uh, I don't want to, you know, do reviews and stuff like that. I'm kind of like that. Here's my honest take on things. And uh, yeah, I, I don't want to, you know, get sponsorships or anything. To which they replied, sounds good. We are very confident on our product. Do with it what you will. And we'll, we'll send you a cleanup sluice and, you know, see, see what happens. So I'm like, all right, cool, free stuff. Sign me up. So I got this thing for free. Um, that, that was about it. They just sent me this sluice. Do with it what I want. So I'm going to do with it what I want. And uh, first impressions. Let's give this thing a quick review. Um, but before we get into that, what's it for? What do you need this for? And as far as I could sort of break this down, prospecting for gold turns into mining for gold. So prospecting, you take a pan out, you see how many colors are in a pan and use that to extrapolate how many grams per yard there might be or how many yards per gram and yada, yada, yada. But when it comes to mining, there's three stages of concentration, essentially. Stage one, you take your high banker and you shovel bank run into the high banker and you get concentrates. They're heavy, they're full of black sands and you bring that home. But to pan this out, if it's got a lot of gold in it, you're literally doing one spoon at a time and it is just painstaking. It's no fun. You want a way to reduce this down. And so a cleanup sluice is just a miniature version of your high banker. Instead of shoveling in, you spoon in or you can use an auto feeder. And the goal essentially is to get the, the gold to black sands ratio heavier in the gold get rid of as much of the black sands, get rid of as much of the blonde sands as you possibly can, and just be left over with a highly concentrated super concentrates, which is stage three concentration, right? So stage one concentration, high banking out of the river, stage two concentration, clean up sluice, and then your super concentrates go to stage three. I use a Miller table for that. If you're dealing with like a gram of gold, you can just pan it out. I've got some strategies for how to do that. Maybe I'll make a video on. I have a video on, I think I titled it, everything I know about Miller tables. That's what happens after this step. So our situation today, we've been out to the river, we've got a bunch of concentrates. Here's our concentrates, roughly 700 milliliters worth. It's the size of a yogurt container that I'm gonna test with today. And uh, I wanna see how much concentrates I'm left over with. Because if this has a ton of concentrates still, then that's more that I'm gonna to have to run over my Miller table at the end of the day. Um, if there's hardly any concentrates in here, that's good, providing it actually caught the gold. According to this, which is a well-written sheet that came with it, they say um, you might need to run it twice. And initially you might think, well, if you have to run it twice, you're clearly losing gold. I don't wanna buy a product that's losing gold. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't take away any points for that yet because one of the things I do with my Miller table is I, I run it assuming some losses. Let's say I lose 5% of my gold. At the stage of a Miller table, I'm dealing with like a cup of material. So I start with an empty tub. I run my cup of material over the Miller table, suck all my gold off the Miller table. Let's say that's 95% of my gold. That gets dried out and weighed. I'm good to go. All of that remaining stuff, it isn't lost. It went into that empty tub. There's only a cup of it and I just store that in a bucket and then I save it up till the end of the year and I can do one final run. So it speeds me up rather than being really careful about not losing anything. Now that doesn't necessarily apply here because if I have a five gallon bucket of concentrates from multiple cleanouts, I don't wanna run it all through here. Say 5% is in my tub, 5% of 10 grams, like that's half a gram, I wanna keep that. So the solution I think for that would be you could have this sluice running first into a second sluice and then just make sure that that second sluice has got everything, at which point everything that's in here, you clean out, pan out, Miller table, that's your weight. And everything from the second sluice, you get another cup out of that. That goes into your save for later pile. 
and everything in the tailings at that point you know is completely clean of gold you can add that to your garden um, the other option would be if you feed this really 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 slowly you'll probably get better recovery but you could just feed it quickly and then feed it all over a second time quickly once again so a lot of options here but what i'm kind of looking to see here is are we in that 95 percent range or higher that would be nice and then if if i am at you know i'm I'm gonna assume there's some gold that gets out. So I might take a secondary sluice, put it below this and use this as part of a system. But I just wanna have a quick close up of this sluice here before we get started. And I'm gonna show you what I'm really curious about. So I'm gonna bring this over. You got your V-ribs at the front, so there's gonna be a good showing of gold right there. And then you've got these square drop riffles. And these kind of confused me because I would assume that if this spiral vortex is this special high technology patented item, they'd just be a bunch of spirals. So why do they have these here? And I have a feeling that these act like they'll probably help spread the flow out, act as a bit of a buffer. This fills up, slowly feeds down, it probably has a good recovery purpose. And honestly, if it was just these, um, none of the special spirals, just those drop riffles, Anyone who's seen a bucket sluice, a little short drop riffle sluice in action, like those work well. But what I'm really curious about is after I run all of my concentrates through this, how much total material and gold are in these drop riffles versus these little spiral vortex riffles? Um, are these doing anything special or better than these? Or are they just a cool marketing gimmick in a sluice that probably still works fine? Uh, one thing to keep in mind, the drop riffle is the first riffle. So it's likely going to have the most gold compared to this because all your gold is going to drop out in the first riffle. Um, <laughs> so I might suck that riffle out separately just to see, and then we'll suck out all of these spirals and then all of the rest of the drop riffles. And we'll just sort of see how much volume of material we have. I'm not going to test, like I'm not going to dry out all the gold and weigh exactly what was where. We're going to do a visual representation. Um, that's another interesting thing to talk about real quick before we get started is how do you actually test a sluice? So many of the sluices and testing of this sluice and that sluice that you see on YouTube especially, they're going to be sort of a subjective view of what's going on with a sluice. To do a truly objective scientific study, if you look at like the, the Clarkson sluice study or the Hamilton sluice study or... Um, Anyways, any of those big documents you can see, there's, there's a lot of variables. And after every single run, you then got to actually pan it all out or run it on the Miller table, dry it, weigh it. And if I just wanted to test three variables, two different slopes, two different flow rates, and two different feed rates, right? We're already at six different cleanups and tests. And if I wanted to do three of each, we're up to 18. And that's a clean out every time. Like it's a phenomenal amount of work to test that, especially if you're gonna compare one sluice to another sluice. So the way we get around that is you're just going to have to hope and assume that the person reviewing is unbiased and sort of knows what they're doing and that I will set this sluice up, get it running as best as I think I can, how I would run it. So then instead of having a controlled variable of slope and flow and running the same slope and flow on a different sluice and a different sluice mat, I'm, I'm just running what I think is best for this and what I think is best for that. So it's one test of this sluice, one test of that sluice, instead of having to go over and test like 20 different times, which would just be, it's, it's not something you do unless you're like a, you know, funded study or like really, really into it, which right now I uh, don't have that much time. So, we're basically going to follow the instructions from the manufacturer. They recommend nine degrees, which I believe works out to about an inch and seven eighths per foot. Um, and yeah, we're going to uh, we're going to go ahead and get this thing set up. Now this is an 1100 gallon per hour bilge pump. And we've already seen their test results. This thing puts out about 700 gallons per hour actually and then what's actually going through this small hole is going to be even less so you're going to have nowhere near a thousand gallons per hour going through this but we've got our dimmer switch here and just for simplicity today i've got an 18 volt battery which can run this thing so it's currently off let's fill the thing up with some water 
See if we can get this generally into the sluice. All right. So, we'll get this little guy right here. All right, so our first issue, the hose is heavy. Now I could easily crank this up all the way to get some water through, but you see how that's tipping over to the side like that? That's your uh, rubber, just really, really bendy. So I'm gonna deal with that. Negative points, guys, negative points, but understandable. So we're just gonna throw this on and that'll keep it sort of level left and right and I should still be able to spoon in okay get a couple spoons in now that we're fresh freshly running again all right so the riffles are filling up initially Some more material in. It's definitely because you feed the water in at the top, it accelerates as it goes down. And the, the speed down here is slightly faster than the speed up here. So you can see near the bottom, these are slightly emptier. That might just be, I don't have enough material in yet. But we're definitely, we're seeing the little flakes are showing up on that rubber. First riffle's looking pretty full, so I'm just gonna let this run for a little while for that to empty out, uh, rather than cranking up the speed any. My, my observations so far with things like this is, if you want to feed quickly, you have to turn up the water flow, but generally turning up that water flow, um, if, you will increase your losses a little bit. Like you need enough water flow to get things active and working, obviously. But if you just say, well, it's not going fast enough, you can crank it up, you're better off a little bit slower feed rate with a little bit slower water flow. Just, of course, I have no idea what I'm talking about here with this machine. But now that it's not being overfed like crazy, it's dancing around and active in there. These are dancing around, they're about half full. That's kind of what I want to see here. So, let's bring another spoon. I'm just gonna tap that whole spoon in. Now you can see everything's filled back up again. And then I'll just wait for those to empty out a little bit before I put the next spoon in. So I'm just gonna crank it up to 35, up to 40. So here we're really ripping. This is probably way too much. We're still keeping that material in those vortexes, but that's too much. So we're gonna drop down to 30 here. And there's still there's still gold, like it doesn't wash it all completely out. So it seems to be doing pretty good as far as that is concerned. Just keep dipping some spoons in here. I'm gonna shut down the cameras and we'll uh, We'll just spoon everything through here and I'll sort of keep trying to observe what's going on and increase or decrease or how quick I need to, to spoon through and everything. I would typically use an auto feeder for something like this, but I'm just gonna spoon through, which means I'm gonna be feeding a little bit faster than I would with an auto feeder because I've actually gotta be here and do it. Um, and then yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna see what's, what's in the drop riffles and what's in those uh, special vortex riffles because I'm, I'm just kind of curious if one works any better than the other. You're gonna be looking from the top of the sluice down here and into these first riffles here. So I just thought it was cool to watch um, how they slowly clean out. Hopefully this can stay focused somewhat here. 
So I'm gonna get this to 60 frames per second and then I'll put a spoon through so you can kind of just watch the action happening. I'm gonna do one final shot. This is uh, looking down the sluice closer to the bottom where the velocity might be a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna add a spoon here. So it's gonna be a longer delay from when I add that spoon to when that material works its way down that far down the sluice. That is an example of how a longer sluice can help with your surging. So I just put three spoons in and it wasn't until I was completely done putting the third spoon in that this far down the sluice it's actually filled up. And so when the top looks like it's completely full and no longer active, down here, the cells are still open. And then now that this cell filled up, the top had a chance to empty down and everything's working well. To be completely honest, guys, I'm seeing more gold in this box than I expected to see because I had already run it through uh, this box previously. I'm gonna give you guys a close up as best as I can while I slowly dial down the water flow to nothing. And then we'll see what's in the box. All right. I'm gonna try to hold this reasonably still here. So you can see everything that's in the, the V ribs, there's definitely some in there. If we come down the box, we're seeing gold in the riffles, and I'll just sort of slide ahead here, right to the very bottom of the box. Absolutely still gold, and so yes, you would want to run twice, um, or I would probably just have this feeding into my regular sluice down there. But let's, uh, let's focus on something fun, and I'll slowly dial it down. 25. 24, 23, 22, almost not even getting enough lift to put water in here. Gotta love this dimmer switch. And there you go, at 19 we have lost head pressure. Just gonna turn that right down. So up top, some gold in here for sure. Now I was running this a little bit hot. Uh, I kind of just wanted to, you know, go through it fairly quickly. At the rate that I've just fed everything, this is way faster than I would normally feed it into my other six inch wide sluice. So 
to see all of this gold in here, even considering that, I am impressed. I'm actually a little bit surprised. Obviously, dumping it out the bottom there. I would say that took me about half an hour to feed like 700 milliliters worth. Um, so obviously it's a three inch wide sluice. It's not the biggest thing in the world, but remember that's half an hour of like pretty super concentrated stuff. Um, if you came home with your miner's moss from the river, you'd have a lot more blonde sands that would just wash right off. Um, so yeah, initial, I, I did not expect to see this much gold left over from my other sluice. So I'm very happy about that. I'm still definitely a fan of my miner's moss for full size high banker at the river. It's like you come home with more concentrates, but that's not really an issue. And just thinking through analogy, some people that I've met that really know what they're doing, use that. So I kind of want to be like them. Um, there's obviously the argument that some people just never change. They're not open to the new fandangled stuff, but I've tried enough things that that miner's moss works really, really good. But would I be open to testing a piece of this in a full size high banker and doing a side by side as close to scientific tests as I could sometime this summer? Yeah, maybe. Uh, I, prior to doing this, I would have said no, not, not really interested in wasting my time on another rubber mat, but it's definitely starts out being a drop riffle. Don't know if those vortexes are actually doing anything special, but drop riffles work well on fine flower gold. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to prop this thing up. So I'm going to, I'm going to raise this end a little bit and lower that end. So it's nice and flat and I'm going to just feed some water into it. So it's like a big pond of non-moving water and I'm going to snuff her up all of these. And then I'm going to snuff her up all of these. And we're going to see how much material we get out of each pile. And then I will pan those out and we will see based on the gold that's in here. Don't know what we started with. Um, sort of how much gold each type of riffle caught. Okay, so based on initial observation of the top riffle versus the second riffle down or the third riffle, the um, amount or concentration of gold in each looks to be similar. So I'm just gonna select all of the drop riffles and then all of the vortex technology, the VDR riffles. And we're gonna leave everything up in the V-rib out of this comparison. So. Start with these riffles. That gold really likes to stick to this uh, this material, which is pretty pretty cool. Just the use of the rubber is actually a nice advantage. Pro VDR. This uh, beat up snuffer bottle was gifted to me by Ben of Gorilla Gold Hunters. He's the guy I was out sniping with. I'm gonna use this to collect all of these fancy VDRs. There doesn't seem to be a pool of gold in the very bottom of them. It's sort of like the gold just sits all around the edges of these little spirals. So it's gonna be a little more difficult to snuffer everything up out of these. Compared to like little bucket sluice I've seen online or something like a Latrap, this is actually kind of complicated to clean out, sort of like my steel stud sluice was. Just there's enough sharp edges that even holding it totally vertical like this, it's material just sort of likes to stick in here. So there's a fair bit of uh, coaxing it out. This was everything for the VDR, the special circle fancy pants. Are they just a marketing gimmick? Regardless, they still worked. So, Get it all in there. Perfect. This was just the regular little drop riffle slots that you could cut out of a piece of two by four that you painted. Actually, you couldn't because 
the, the rubber material does make a difference. So the actual rubber is different than just like a painted surface. Okay. And then uh, just before I start sort of panning these, this was the four amp hour, 18 volt battery I was using at approximately a 30% on the dimmer. Still shows four bars. So the actual amp draw, uh, this was, it was running for, I don't know whether it was like probably about 45 minutes. Roughly similar amount of material came from each. I'm going to back pan the VDR stuff first. This is going to be a slow and tedious process. Uh, I won't do a perfect job because I actually am going to use the same material to test some more mats later in a future video. I'll cut ahead to once I have these cleaned up a bit. So if I just uh, bring the sluice up here, these fancy little spiral circles is this gold and basically just little drop riffle square edge troughs is that gold. I'm going to set this down. We'll give you the close up. Here, you be the judge. Let me just get this off the, this is the little tripod you've been watching me from. Um, so yeah, here's the VDR. I'm going to hold this. Let me just use my hand and finger. So that exact distance away. That's one. And that's two. I would say the regular drop riffles that you're looking at right here probably have twice as much gold. It's kind of hard to tell side by side. Yeah, like there's clearly less gold in this pan than in that pan. I, I spent about 10 minutes on each pan trying to pan these down. It's fine gold, it's hard to work with. Um, there's, there's more gold back here, but there should be the same amount of more gold back there, um, as there is back here in each pan. But yeah, um, slightly more concentrates, like if you just compare it to snuffer bottles side by side in the regular drop riffles. So the VDRs have slightly less overall concentrates, but like just by a hair, but yeah, these have like twice as much gold in them. So either... My original prediction, which was all the gold was right here in the first riffle, and that's why there's twice as much gold. But visually, looking at them and sucking them out, that was not the case. It was more concentrated near the top and then slowly tapered down, but like we were losing gold out the bottom like crazy. That's not the sluice's fault. So there you have it. By Infinity Prospecting, Devon Gold's patented VDR sluice. Three-inch cleanup sluice right there. Um... Definitely interesting that these riffles did not seem to perform as well as these riffles, but as a package, the material it's made out of just seems to stick to the gold really well. And I was able to feed this pretty quickly. I'm happy with it. Um, I'm definitely probably going to use this as a part of my actual cleanup sluice this summer. So my idea right now is my, my auto feed hopper would feed directly into this, which would feed into an extension cleanup sluice. And then depending on what percentage recovery we get when I do a, a better test in the future, I may just put this to the miller table and that's the wait for the trip. And the, the rest of the sluice might be something I just do once at the end of the year to save time, right? Um, but yeah, pretty solid unit. I like that it is a complete unit, has the sides and everything, even though it's a little wobbly. Throw it on a two by four, you can easily make this thing work. If anyone is interested in a cleanup sluice, definitely have a look at this. Uh, for this video, I, I've kind of been just looking at the product and ignoring the fact that there's real human beings behind this company that have you know, put their heart and souls into bringing this to the world for prospectors to use. It, initially looking at it, I'm like, yeah, that's a bit on the expensive side, but it's a full package. And honestly, if something works better than something else, I'm the kind of guy who will spend more money on the thing that works a little bit better. Cause I want, I want to be working with the best stuff to make sure that I'm coming home with the most gold and the most efficient setup. Uh, this is clearly not a conclusive video yet. I don't know if this mat is something that I would use in my high banker yet, but 
there it is. I, I gave it a little test. It doesn't suck. So uh, thanks to Tyler of Infinity Prospecting for reaching out. Uh, he, he contacted me back when I think I just had over just over 2,000 subscribers and wanted to know if I wanted to try one of the products. So thanks for letting me give her a go. And uh, yeah, I'll probably be, probably be using it as part of the system this summer. Sorry for the, uh, I don't know, subpar content, if, if this has been a little bit random of a video. Hopefully I can clean it up in editing. But uh, yeah, I've just been very busy in my non-YouTube life. Uh, stressful things happening. So hopefully, maybe not by next week, but the week after I'll have everything sorted out, be back at a river, and we'll get some more adventures in. Until then, cheers and thanks for watching, everyone.